I've got a very special sound to break down today. It's the Plantasia melody sound that sounds like a whistle with vibrato. And I'm choosing to make it on this Moog synthesizer because it's the Plantasia Moog. It was owned by Mort Garson and he's the artist on the Plantasia album. He wrote the music and he performed it on this very synthesizer. So it's something I've fallen in love with. I've had this synthesizer a little over a year. Um, I learned on these Moogs when I first started way, way back in the early 70s. I had an opportunity to, to play around on it and then um, make some sounds. And I've got one here and let's, let's dive into the Plantasia Moog and work on the Plantasia Melody. So here we go. We've got the Moog 3C. It's called the 3C because there's three stories. Three, one, two, three. And it's called a C because it's got a really nice wood cabinet. The 3P is the Moog where, that you've seen before that has like three black cabinets that are next to each other. It doesn't stack up high like this one. This is more of the beautiful cabinet that you probably don't want to move around a lot, but I, I'm, I've been moving it around anyway because I just love bringing this synthesizer to different settings. So let's come on in and I'm going to show you how to make this very simple melody sound. There's a few patch chords involved because it's a Moog modular, but it's not too complicated. Let's take a look. So the way I like to break the sounds down is in terms of pitch, timbre, duration, and amplitude. So starting with pitch, we're going to find the oscillator section, which is in the lower story. So that's the one of the 3C. And you'll notice there's four modules here. The first one says oscillator driver. The second says oscillator frequency, oscillator frequency, oscillator frequency for two, three, and four. So what's the difference? Well, oscillator driver controls the pitch for all three oscillators. And then these knobs become the fine tune for the oscillators. So for this sound, I only need one oscillator. So I'm taking the triangle output, very simple tone, and I'm sending it into the mixer. Now, I don't have to go into a mixer because usually you need the mixer so that you can mix three oscillators and have one output and send that to the filter. The filter on the Moog modular only has one input and you can see that right here. So we normally have to take the output of a mixer so we can get three oscillators into one input. In this case, we only have one oscillator, but I'm choosing to go into the mixer for a particular reason, because I like the harmonic distortion and saturation that happens in this mixer. So I'm taking the triangle output into the mixer, and then I have my mixer output here that I'm gonna send up to the filter, which I showed you earlier, the filter input. So let's take a look at the filter. Filter is on the second deck of the synthesizer, and I can see here there's three knobs, so not too complicated. Fixed control voltage, that's just like the cutoff frequency on filters that you're familiar with. Frequency range just tells you how much range of the filter you're going to be able to control with whatever your control signal input is, and in this case it's an envelope generator, so I have it maxed out. And regeneration on the Mini Moog is the same as emphasis or resonance on other synthesizers. So you can see there's none on this sound and fixed control voltage, which is the initial filter frequency, is down to zero as well. So I just have the filter range all the way up so that I can control it with an envelope generator. So let's move over here a little bit to the right and we can find the VCA. So you can see the filters going to the VCA and then we have an output of VCA. So the only thing that we need in order to make the sound happen is an envelope generator, one envelope generator. So I take the output of this envelope generator and I patch it into the filter. And then there's also the same envelope generator already going to this VCA because it's normal there. So I don't need another patch cord. Essentially, I have a triangle wave following this chord, going into a mixer, full volume, following my finger, output of the mixer, following this patch chord, all the way up to the filter, an envelope generator controlling the filter right here, and we can track the envelope generator right over here, back to the filter. The signal output of the filter goes directly into the VCA, the VCA output and this is the part we haven't covered yet, goes down here to this output mixer. And that goes right out to our speakers. 
And the last thing is the same envelope generator that I showed you that's controlling the filter is also controlling the voltage controlled amplifier. And I don't need to put a cord in there because it's normaled. So when I play the keyboard, it triggers the VCA and it gates the sound in and out. Now notice the sound decays a little bit, but still sustains. So I want to show you the settings on the single envelope generator that we're using. So listen carefully to that same note. It decays, but it sustains at this sustain level. So that would be a lot of sustain. It wouldn't decay. But if I bring the sustain down, it'll decay to wherever I set this. And I like it right around there. So the sound will decay when I play it. Notice how it comes down? So it's moving, it's not just sitting there like an organ. And then I have a little bit of release time. Let's look at the envelope generator right now. That would be no release time. And now back to the envelope generator. I give it some release time and then I play the keyboard. Watch what happens. A little bit of ring. So it allows me to When I come off the key, the sound continues to sing. And then the last function that I'm using on the envelope generator is a little bit of slow attack time. So you can hear the, it'll make the filter open and it'll make the volume kind of come up slowly. Here's the difference. You hear that attack? Softer. More like someone whistling. Please remember to like and subscribe. We noticed that a lot of people watching the videos aren't subscribing yet, so now's a good time. Push that button, it means a lot to us. We wanna keep making these types of videos for you. And we do enjoy it and like reading your comments, so do it now. Let's get back to the video. There you have the basic components of the sound. Now, how do we make it a little bit special? We usually do that by adding expression. So the things that I hear is a subtle pitch slide from note to note. So how do we cover that? Portamento, called Glide on the Moog. So I can set that on the keyboard to, to, to slowly, it's basically making the keyboard control voltage take its time when it goes from note to note rather than go immediately to that note. Then I also hear vibrato, and I can set that and just kind of leave it. And then the last subtle amount of expression is a little bit of noise that I add as if somebody's whistling. So I'll let you hear this. Just listen really carefully. Now let's hear that same sound without the noise. With the noise. I'll put a lot in and I'll go up high. There's a lot. Here's none. Hear the difference? None. A lot. So now I've found a nice spot for it to live around four. And here's none again. Maybe a little less. And when you add reverb to that sound, the noise kind of goes away. And it's kind of like when you mic a violin and you get up really close, the sound of the rosin is really noisy and it's not really that nice of a sound. But when you get far away in a room, you don't hear that and you just hear the beautiful tone. But that little bit of scratching that comes from the rosin gives the sound some bite and just some, some distinction and personality. And that's the same thing that this noise does. This is a great module because there's only one output and no knobs. It's called white sound source. So I take the output of the white sound source, which is just white noise, and I run it up to an attenuator right here. And I showed you how we dialed in just the right amount. Now I'm following this cable. Let's follow it all the way over to this module. And if we get in close, we can see this module is called the fixed filter bank. And what it does, it 
brings out just certain frequencies of the noise. So it's not a big, thick, noisy sound. It's kind of like a parametric equalizer. So I run it through that and thin out the noise so it's not so broad. Take the output and then patch it directly into this oscillator driver so it would potentially noise modulate all three oscillators, one, two, and three, just because I'm going into the main controller. So there's two more parts of the sound that we want to grab. The next one is vibrato. We're going to start with an oscillator that's living up here on the top deck. This is level three of the 3C. And if you notice, I put it in low frequency mode. There's 32, 16, 8, 4, and 2 foot stops. So I put it in low frequency. And I get the speed how I wanted it to match um, Mort Garson's vibrato. Following the cable now, right down here to this attenuator, where I can set the amount of vibrato. And listen carefully. Here's no vibrato. Kind of bland. And by having this switch number four up, it sends the output of this attenuator directly to the pitch of the oscillator. So I'm able to get vibrato. And if we go back over to the oscillator up here, you can hear the speed. That's slower. But we're here. Quick interruption. Go to anthonymarinellimusic.com. You can check out our exclusive free content, sign up for the mailing list, and be a part of what we're building. Back to the video. And now for the last expressive component, Glide, or Portamento. And that's on the keyboard. You'll be able to see it. Uh, where is that guy? Right there. So there's zero, and you can, I'll play some notes. No portamento, now portamento. Right there, you really hear it. When, when you do wide intervals, you get that pitch slide. So we did a really in-depth look because I don't know how many of you are really that familiar with a Moog modular. It's really not a complicated sound because if I describe it to you, it's one triangle wave that goes into a filter that's controlled by an envelope generator. And then that filter goes into a VCA that's controlled by the same envelope generator. And it has a little bit of decay on it, like some medium amount of decay, a kind of a low sustain level so that the sound decays down to a sustain, a little bit of release so it doesn't clip off when you release the note. And then there's three expressive things. There's some noise modulating the pitch of the oscillator. There's vibrato that's moving at a very fast rate and it's always there. And the last thing is portamento or glide so that when you go from one pitch to the other, the keyboard control voltage is lagged and it takes time to get to the next note and it slides. And then you can get a very expressive performance. See how the sound kind of comes down? All on its own without having an expressive keyboard. So I hope you enjoyed this one. And then I also hope that you give it a shot if you can find a Moog Modular VST. But you can also easily make this on other synths. It's translatable. And I'll consider making some other versions for you um, on some other synths just so you can see how to make a basic whistle sound because it's, it's a pretty nice expressive sound to use in, in a lot of different genres. I hope you like this video. It's really fun for me for the first time to make a sound on this big Moog. And I know you can translate it into other synths. We're gonna be doing some more stuff on Plantasia. There's some big videos coming out and we're gonna be putting some content out. So look for that and make this whistle sound. It's great on a lot of different kinds of music. Let me know in your comments what you think. This was a fun one for me. Thanks very much. See you soon.